Why on earth does Chuck E. Cheese serve alcohol? Chuck E. Cheese is one of those North American staples that anyone with a childhood in the last 40 years can remember. Somehow, Chuck's has managed to bridge the generational gap between millennial age groups, uniting us all through the same weird shared experience. Who could forget the sea of arcade games, the pizza, the animatronic in-house- Dude, I hated Chuck E. Cheese even as a kid because no matter how good you did, you didn't get more tickets, which bothered me. Because then it was- just like, yeah, you're going there to play the game, but there's no reward for performing better. That's why I liked Dave and Buster's even as a child more, because when you went to Dave and Buster's, yeah, the games are harder and I sucked at them. But I mean, when you did well in Dave and Buster's, you would get more tickets. Whereas Chuck E. Cheese, you could score 10 or 10,000 and you would still get six tickets. Do you hear it? The sound of the ticket muncher. The frantic laughter. Oh, that's nostalgic. The joyful chorus oh, of happy that's birthday. Nostalgic. Chuck and you're sitting up, you're posted up, you've been saving up your tickets, and you just go oh, 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 for like a 20 minute experience. That's what that was the best part of going there. Child that just cracked himself in the head with a ski ball after a wildly inappropriate overhand throw. The place was a blast, and if you were fortunate enough to have a birthday there, you were given the VIP treatment. Yo, what blew, though, was when you would hit... You ever go to a place that... Like, you know how everything's digital now? Remember back when it was just all tickets, and you would hit a jackpot, and you would have to sit there for, like, 15 minutes as all of your tickets just came out? That was the worst. Like, it was fun for the first three minutes, but then you'd be like, bro, can they spit them out quicker? I'm actually trying to play a f game. You're just sitting on your ass waiting for a thousand tickets to f dispense. I mean, you got a sticker, a balloon, high five. Digital's so boring. I think having the tickets was fun, but it was also like a hassle. Digital's annoying in the sense that it's not as nostalgic, but it's better in the sense that it's, you don't have to lug around tickets. Like, you remember going to an arcade, you had all the tickets, and then you would have to get cups to hold them, and you would have to, you, would, you wouldn't have enough hands to fucking carry however many tickets you had. Oh my god. Ives from Chuck himself. You were the king. But shortly after, you'd be ushered into an assembly line of birthday parties with rows of other kids who had the exact same sticker and the exact same balloon. As a six-year-old, this was one of those subtle realizations that- God, I remember people shitting in the sky tubes. God, Chuck E. Cheese is such a fucking nostalgic place. Some kid taking a fucking dump in the fucking sky tubes. Fucking shit in his pants, getting lost. Be all that special. Regardless, the overall consensus by most of us is that Chuck E. Cheese was a positive experience as a child. Something that we can remember fondly from our youth. But over the past 12 years or so, with the rise of cellular cameras, guests have begun to capture a different side of the restaurant. And it is absolutely insane. <laughs> Not the fucking Chuck E. Cheese fist fight. Oh my god. Absolutely insane. How do you think that started? The throwdown at fucking Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> Two brutal brawls this week at the same Chuck E. Cheese restaurant in San Bernardino County. Wow. Did he get a gun? Now this is a place where kids go. Unbelievable. What Chuck E. Cheese's even have this many fucking people? And where are these people's kids? Or are they just here? I feel like, what age is it weird to... I would say, if you go to a Chuck E. Cheese without a parent, you're too old. Like, that's... Like, why are... I know damn well not everybody here had a fucking child. Like, if you're going to a Chuck E. Cheese, you should not have a driver's license. <laughs> not only that. You, your parents should be taking you. Now this is a place where kids go. Unbelievable. Adults aren't allowed in without kids, is that true? Like, no way these women have all, all have children. 
Now that's hospitality. The number of violent outbreaks that occur at Chuck E. Cheese on a yearly basis is absolutely staggering. To quote I would have never guessed that. If you asked me how many fist fights go down at Chuck E. Cheese per year, I'd say maybe one. Certain locations, like the one in Pennsylvania, had the police called to their location 17 times in 18 what? months. Another location in Amherst, New York, had 123 calls to police in a three-year time frame. Violent outbreaks range from fist fights to knife attacks to even a handful of fatal shootings. I mean, you don't even Dude, see this much- a fucking fatal shooting at a Chuck E. Cheese. Jackson at a Dave & Buster's. The whole thing makes you wonder- what yeah, Dave & Buster's, it does, it's, I know he's gonna say alcohol is a reasoning, but people are fucking hammered at Dave & Buster's. Dave & Buster's is the adult arcade. Like, you go there and get drunk and play fucking arcade games. Like, they, that's, that is Dave & Buster's. But you don't really see people fist fight at Dave & Buster's. I mean, maybe they have them because I didn't expect Chuck E. Cheese to have fist fights. But I've been to Dave & Buster's so many times and I've never seen people get mad at each other. Happened to all the wholesome experiences we remember as kids. You know, like Chuck E. Cheese lighting a menorah for a bunch of Jewish kids kind of wholesome. We need you to light the shamash, the tall candle in the middle. Light that menorah. With a little digging, you can find headlines that go as far back as 2005 regarding countless instances where violent outbreaks have occurred. As we move into the 10s, the amount of recorded fights is almost overwhelming. I mean, literally just search Chuck E. Cheese fight on YouTube and you'll find a curated playlist of 91 different videos. Wow. This one's my favorite, where the guy in the green shirt looks like he's winding up for the meanest sucker punch of his life, but it turns out he's just applying hand sanitizer while two women go at it in the background. As for the company's response to all these incidents, well, from the looks of it, Chuck E. Cheese has essentially been playing PR dodgeball for the past 15 years. Bro, you gotta be an NPC to get into a fist fight at a Chuck E. Cheese. I just gotta say that. Like, if you're the type of person to fucking throw down at a Chuck E. Cheese, you have you have to have anger problems with public statements that never really address the issue directly the company makes an effort to point out the 99.9 .9 of guests that come to their restaurants without incident while claiming to have spent over 15 million dollars on measures to improve safety one of those initiatives included an improved security camera system and as we all know security cameras don't really improve safety they just ensure that the next ball pit rko is caught in glorious 240p there's clearly more issues at play here it comes as no surprise that birthday parties are stressful situations for parents especially at public establishments Everyone involved wants things to go smoothly, and when it's every kid's special day, tensions can start to rise. Did you guys ever have a birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese? No. I went to Chuck E. Cheese when I was a kid multiple times, but I never, I never had a party there. I feel like I never really had a party anywhere but, like, a family member's house. Incidents have spawned from anything as simple as disputes over tickets to a child taking too long to choose a prize petty arguments that end up having pretty extreme outcomes. Oh! But even with the hectic act- Get your kid to choose a damn eraser already! God damn! Hurry it the fuck up! Your kid ain't got no tickets! Get him the pencil! I don't know why he's looking at the PS5, he don't got enough. I don't know why he's staring at that bouncy ball, he ain't gonna get it. Turns out, Chuck E. Cheese franchisees have the option of applying for alcohol licenses, granting them the ability to serve beer and wine to adult guests. From a business standpoint, it's genius. Getting hammered at a Chuck E. Cheese would feel like a fever dream. From a ability standpoint, it starts to look like a much dicier operation, at least at face value. CEC Entertainment will say that their two-drink limit on adult guests prevents the possibility two of- Two-drink limit? It's the fucking point of having a beer at Chuck E. Cheese. Alcohol-fueled arguments. Well, that's at least comforting. Chuck E. Cheese has a policy of serving only two alcoholic beverages per adult. But when she wanted two more, she's told how to get around- game the Chuck E. Cheese. ...found their two-drink limit. I just need someone else's ID. Someone else's ID, and then I can order two more, but just with somebody else's. Okay. Pack it up. Yeah. We got it. Now we're good. 
This kind of publicity is just another nail in the coffin for Chuck E. Cheese, a company that has been over $1 billion in debt since 2014. The truth is, Chuck's debt. balance sheet has never been great. The restaurant has filed for bankruptcy twice, once just after the video game crash of 1983, and another in 2020 when the company was forced to close during the pandemic. Tack on violent news headlines, accusations of the irresponsible vending of alcohol, and an inaccurate yet overly publicized scandal about recycled pizza, and you've got a pretty rough brand image. So bad in no, fact- No, but the pizza at Chuck E. Cheese was fire. I remember really enjoying the Chuck E. Cheese pizza. Let's just say the company took some pretty drastic measures to make ends meet when the pandemic hit. To make a long story short, if you ever ordered from Pasquale's Pizza and Wings on Grubhub or Uber Eats, then congratulations. You literally ordered takeout from Chuck E. Cheese. This was all part of a temporary rebrand to establish ghost kitchens inside of recently closed locations. Since the restaurants couldn't open, but still had the infrastructure to serve pizza, the company would simply list themselves under a different name on food delivery apps to make some extra money. Yeah, and since Dordashin from Chuck E. Cheese. Since you'd have to be a psychopath to willingly order takeout from Chuck E. Cheese, the company made a harmless little name change to appear- I would- I would Doordash from Chuck E. Cheese. If I was- if I was down bad at like 2 a.m. and for some god-awful reason the Chuck E. Cheese ghost kitchen was open, I would Doordash from Chuck E. Cheese. Chizees for trying to make ends meet, but the company still caught some bad press for it. The truth is, Chuck E. Cheese has never been too good at finding ways to improve sales. Throughout the last 40 years, the restaurant's knee-jerk response to slipping revenue has always been that Chuck just isn't cool enough. As a result, Chuck has undergone a myriad of makeovers over the yeah, past- Yeah, I don't know why they just focus so much on the fucking animatronic fucking character, or what Chuck E. Cheese looks like and what he's wearing and how cool his personality is. Like, dude, the reason Chuck E. Cheese blows is because the games fucking suck cock. And it's 2024. If people are gonna go to an arcade, they're gonna go to Dave and Buster's. Guitars. This kind of response comes as no surprise from a company that owes a huge portion of its success solely to its mascot. The character's been a tried and true hit for decades. And to this day, kids still come to the restaurant just to get a chance- Yeah, but now Chuck E. Cheese looks like somebody you want to fucking curb stomp. That dumbass fucking mouse. It's no longer like a cool rat, now it looks like a fucking stupid ass mouse that you just want to punch in the face. ...to see Chuck himself. Originally, when Chuck E. Cheese's competitor, Showbiz Pizza, bought out Chuck's in 1985, all Showbiz locations were actually turned into Chuck E. Cheese's instead of vice versa. A large part of the reason was owed to the fact that Chuck was just a bigger hit with kids than Showbiz's Billy Bob the Bear. Yeah, that thing looks like it would fucking kill you. Since then, the company has always been looking for new ways to bring in customers, from the constant mascot reworks, to menu changes, to even removing their entire animatronics show from most locations. Most recently, the restaurant has been working to reinvent itself in an attempt to capture the attention of- I mean, that- that- I haven't seen a Chuck E. Cheese like that. That looks honestly pretty appealing. Comparable to- like, the- the Chuck E. Cheese that I know is like- it's a fucking very low quality image. But like, that's the Chuck E. Cheese I know of. Just looks like it's still straight out of the 80s. Old ass fucking, old ass fucking photo. Building looks like it's fucking built a hundred years ago. Like, this looks good. Millennial parents. These changes include free Wi Fi, fancier pizzas. Oh, and wow, free Wi Fi. Oh. Oh. To even craft beer choices. Oh, you really got me that craft beer? Am I really about to be sitting down drinking fucking IPAs at a fucking Chuck E. Cheese? And no, this is not satire. In all honesty, the whole thing is kind of an eye roller. But it's not like there wasn't some sense to it. Millennials are the God, ones- God, I really do see millennials going to Chuck E. Cheese, though. Taking their kids to Chuck E. Cheese, so it's gotta be attractive for the adults, too. And as a Gen Z slash millennial hybrid myself, I had to admit those craft beer options did sound pretty good. So I decided to do some- I'd just go to a bar, or again, a fucking Dave and Buster's. Field work. 
I was on a mission. A mission to find out how Chuck E. Cheese had stood the test of time, and if it really had devolved into the violent, alcohol-fueled mess that the media made it out to be. And my first order of business was to get me a beer. Hi, I have a really uh, quick question. Um, do you guys serve beer at your establishment? Okay, I was just wondering. Thank you Do so much. You guys sell Kona Big Wave? What about Mango Cart? What I what is what is your IPA selection like? Give me a quick read. Bye now. And with that, we hit the road. Eager to play some games, eat some pizza. I'll oh, see now that's a Chuck E. Cheese. And hopefully crush a few beers. Turns out Chuck's has no problem with letting an entire group of adults walk into their restaurant, so we were let right in, where we promptly learned that they had run out of alcohol. That's right. Run out of alcohol? Either some manager did a really bad job at keeping inventory, or Chuck E. Cheese really did have a drinking problem. I have to admit, this moment was a little discouraging. Did I maybe lure the majority of my friend group to Chuck E. Oh, oh, yeah, dude, no, nobody else would go. The second you find out that, uh, that shit has no fucking alcohol, you're like, oh, fuck this place. Oh, what the fuck? Promise of free alcohol? Yes. Did I let that stop us from having a good time? Hell no. So we ordered an extra large pie, loaded up on some credits, and hit the arcade while we waited- Three sneak in fucking fireball shooters. Just slug that shit in the bathroom. For our pizza. And here's where I hit my first nostalgia crush of the day. Turns out, at some point in time, Chuck E. Cheese opted to use play cards instead of coins. Kind of like what Palladium or Dave and Buster's Oh my god, I forgot you used to insert coins. Oh, but they don't have- Do they still have tickets at uh, Chuck E. Cheese? Jen and Jake for the sub. Toad PhD for the tier 2 sub. For 27 months in a row. W Toad. Think of the fucking 27 month sub, Toad. Oh my god. Random for the thousand buddies. I love what you do. Keep it up. Penny can. Thank you for the five gifteds. Or the ten gifteds, Penny can. Thank you for the fucking subs. I'm sorry I missed that shit. Dub in the chat for that. Thank you, Penny can 89 for the fucking ten gifteds. Prime for the three. Says slang on the ops. Go, go, Glia for the sub. Easy PL Burger King for the sub. Fuse for the three. Chef for the sub. Baked for the $10 donor to Lymphoma Research Fund. Thank you for the fucking ten. Preoccupied with a single leaf. You won't see the tree. Preoccupied with a single tree, you won't see the entire forest. Don't be preoccupied with a single spot. See everything in its entirety effortless, effortlessly. That is what is meant, uh, that is what it means to truly see. W fucking quote. Tidy for the sub EV for the fucking 250, uh, to, or $2.50 to Lymphoma Research Fund. Love what, uh, you're doing. You're awesome. You always brighten up my day when I feel down. Presley for the 10, uh, to Lymphoma Research Fund says first donor. Lowen for the sub and Jay Breeze for the one. Does. Now, what does that mean exactly? Coins, gone. Tickets, gone. Patience, after tapping the RFID reader six times just to play skee-ball, gone. Now listen, I understand this is a much more sustainable option, but the fact that kids today will never know the feeling of running wildly from cabinet to cabinet with a stack of tickets falling out of their pockets is kind of depressing. Or how nah, about- They also won't- they won't know the letdown when you- when you go to the ticket counter and you have way less tickets than you thought you had. You pull up to the ticket counter, you're like, damn, bro, I probably got like a thousand of these bitches. You have like 330 or something like that. When you find that one lone coin some kid left behind because he was too jacked up on Orange Crush to notice. Now everything's just been reduced to ones and zeros. You tap to play and the tickets you win are transferred onto the card you play with. Bummer. As for the games themselves, things had certainly changed. You see, this was my first time to Chuck E. Cheese since the advent of mobile gaming. And it really- Yeah, I don't even remember what game- Dude, all the- the only games that I remember at Chuck E. Cheese was basketball, skee-ball, the shooting games where you're like fighting zombies and shit, or like aliens, and then maybe like dumb fucking- Oh my god, what did they have? What fucking games did we play at Chuck E. Cheese as kids? Fruit Ninja? Dude, I'm saying before mobile gaming. Or not before mobile gaming, but like 10 years ago, what the fuck did they have at Chuck E. Cheese? Jurassic Park, Mario Kart, Skee Ball. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I feel like random racing games and shit. You had a lot of touch. Oh, the fish wheel. Yeah. 
no, that's at Dave and Buster's because at Chuck E. Cheese, you only get a certain amount of tickets for each game. I don't know if they do that anymore. I feel like now it looks like it's more skill based. But the Chuck E. Cheese I remember was regardless of your score, you got like a predetermined amount of tickets. Screens, a lot of one button mashers, and not a whole lot of long lived fun. I guess these games are a lot easier for younger audiences to latch onto and understand. But at the same time, I can say without a doubt that the games they used to have were objectively better in almost every way. In 2004, at this exact same level, Bro, the one where it, you stood on a sensor plate and it was like jump rope. And so you had to like, you it, it would be like a light that would go around. Y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about? Editor, throw image in of light up jump rope game. Very fun. Location, they had Star Wars Pod Racer, a Turtles in Time cabinet, and a game called Brave Firefighters, where you literally manned a light gun in the shape of a hose and dove into blazing buildings. Clearly a lot was lost, but thankfully, the location still kept some of the classics. There was skee ball, basketball, a few good racers, and Simpsons Soccer, which has literally been operational at that location for over 20 years at this point. Moving on to the rest of the venue, I am glad to report that this location still had the decency to keep the animatronic banned. At least for now. You see, another part of CEC's big rebrand involves the removal of one of the restaurant's most distinguishable features. Munch's Make Believe Band. In its place- Wait, but they're, that's what Chuck E. Cheese is supposed to fucking look like now? That just looks like a restaurant. Removal of one of the restaurants- Oh my god, they're literally ripping Dave & Buster's. That's exactly- Dave & Buster's is just a restaurant section and then an arcade. Restaurant's most distinguishable features. Munch's Make Believe Band. In its place, restaurants are installing interactive dance floors where kids can jump around and be treated to special appearances by Chuck's walk around, as it's dubbed in the biz. As for the band, well, only the shadow of their silhouettes remain, painted on the walls to serve as a constant reminder of what once was. Eerie. I always forget that Chuck E. Cheese actually has a person. Like, obviously it's not an anima like a fucking animatronic and it's not like a real life seven foot rat but i never i always obviously know that there's a person in inside but i never make the connection that like wow this is like somebody making minimum wage that is dressed up as chuck e cheese going around going and fucking saying nothing after we explored the venue and played some games the pizza showed up at our table and I can say with full confidence that it actually wasn't that bad. I can also report that there was no evidence at all of reused slices, which, for the uninformed, was quite the scandal at one point. But regardless of whether or not the rumor was true, it seems Chucks took it to heart, and now all of their remodeled locations include open kitchens. Coincidence? Hardly. When we finished with our food and our 30-minute all-you-can-play card had expired, we decided to pack it in. Turns out- 30-minute all-you-can-play card? That's kind of fucking sick. Wait, you don't have, like, credits? Oh, we actually racked up a half-decent amount of tickets and went to cash- Yo, I'd be fucking tapping every single fucking machine with my, with my card and just cranking out tickets. There were a couple items that caught my eye, but the one I wanted more than all the others was a little too expensive. We were about to settle for something cheaper when I learned that you can literally just buy the items with real cash. What? And that was all I needed to hear. Bro, that kind of defeats the purpose of the fucking arcade. That, like, actually kind of annoys me. You, it, I mean, like, that, that's appealing to, like, an adult. But, I mean, bro, like, you have to, I, the whole point is you have to earn the fucking item. Okay. Really? Okay. Do I? <laughs> You're not just saying that? No. <laughs> okay. Overall, my experience at Chuck E. Cheese was actually pretty pleasant. Yes, the games may have been subpar and the play cards may have been a little bit more than disappointing, but the food was good and I didn't find myself in any sort of violent altercations. Would I have enjoyed myself a bit more with a couple of beers? Probably, but the trip down memory lane was enough to keep me occupied. And that's why I'm giving my experience four rats out of five.
or is it mice? Is he is he a rat? Yeah, is he a rat or is he a mouse? Or a mouse? Do we ever do we ever clarify? Now I know Chuck E. Cheese has been getting a bad rap these days, and I know in a weird way this video may have contributed to that. But no matter what we think about the direction Chuck E. Cheese is headed, we can at least remember fondly about where it's been. Like that looks like a rat, but the new version of Chuck E. Cheese looks like a mouse. Yes, the company's had some rocky moments, and yes, you have an incredibly slim but still slightly possible chance of being shot there, but for the most part, it's just how we always remembered it. As a place where a kid can be a kid. Or at least in my case, pretend to be. Fucking W, man.